Okay, guys. How you doing? It's the Saturday morning post. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. What I'm doing here is putting together my 79 set binder set. I'm going to be going through this and uh, see if it's worth grading the entire set. I have only five cards missing, which I got a couple in their original uh, player boxes anyways. And Ozzy Smith's card is in his rookie box. I mean, his uh, Hall of Fame box. So anyways, this is what I've been doing. Putting this set together. It's not a not a real bad set. Not a lot of off center cards, uh, unless you're real picky. And this is off center, top to bottom. Uh, probably, you know. So, but I'm putting this together. I've been holding it off and uh, holding it off, and uh, now I'm getting to it because I got a lot on my plate. Uh, I'm moving my girlfriend into her new home that I bought her. I'm still a budget collector. I just gave her the down payment for it. In a couple months, I get that back. <clears throat> so, anyways, this is what I'm doing. Hopefully, uh, I'll get it finished today. I got a card show tomorrow. To go to, might be able to pick up a couple cards. There's Pete Rose, Gidry, Stearns, Stewart. There's Johnny Bench. So, anyways, uh, uh, Willie McCovey, sad that he passed away. But this is what I've been doing. I basically collect cards, and do the cards for history of baseball. Not so much the value. Value comes down the road, you know. Uh, if you focus on value, 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 why don't you just open up a business, you know. Go open up an LCS store. Or go into some other type of business where you can make a lot of money. Stocks or something. Because you ain't going to get rich in baseball. And the collection of sports cards and trying to sell them for big bucks. Every time you see a big buck card sold on eBay for $50,000, don't believe it. Probably got a buddy that's that's doing it, saying it on the side. I mean, you want to, the only cards I can see making, you know, spending a lot of money on are those real super rare rare old cards those real tobacco cards you know like a honus wagner you know or a babe ruth you know i mean you know <clears throat> real real old cards that are over 100 years old then you might get some value to it over time if you hold on to it long enough but you got to remember our community our hobby is very small. Select, not a, not a lot of people do this. Out of all the people you see in stadiums in football, hockey, and baseball, maybe less than 1% collect cards, including the sports guys that play. So the rest of people don't do it. They just like the sport. They don't collect nothing. So be careful what you're spending. You know, uh, I was watching a baseball collector when he uh, met some new guys that are older men like me. I'm going to be 69. And uh, I'm still chasing my shoebox of all those cards from the 50s and 60s I had. Anyways, he said that those guys, you know, they got cards that, you wouldn't even believe that they got. But uh, you got to remember, they collected them when they were kids. And they held on to it. I would have been the same way. But my mother threw out my shoebox when I went to the war. 
She thought it was junk. All bent up and that she thought they were, because there was a couple that were there in the box from my bicycle days with the guys when we used to put Mickey Mantle on our spokes. Anyways, she tossed it when I was over in Vietnam. And uh, I came back and I was looking for them and they were gone. It's like, oh my God, I had about uh, 10, 15 Mickey Mantle rookie cards in there. Ah, uh, Don Drysdale, Yogi Berra. Uh, it's like, oh God. You know, Joe DiMaggio. I just, I cringed. You know, something I can't get back. So, I'm trying to chase it. But I've been uh, a set collector for many, many years. And now I'm switching, getting away from building too many sets. And getting more into the slab, graded slabs for my Hall of Famers. And the sets that I have here, I'm going to probably build. And then that will be the end of them. I might even sell some of them. But I like to get a, get the uh, <clears throat> vintage ones graded as a complete set. And then see what I can sell it for. That's where you make your money on the end. You know? In my book, it's either one or two ways. Get them all graded as a complete set, sell it that way, or you auction them off, auction the whole set off, grade it or, or raw, and take your pot luck. See what you get. But the rule is buy low, sell high. Remember? Buy low, sell high for anybody. So anybody that's on eBay, they're looking for that low buy so they can sell high. Give you an example. A 1961 Mickey Mantle, red back, uh, card number four something. My friend out at the flea market has its PSA graded. It's a graded a four. He wants 160 for it. Well, what I've been looking at, a lot of those cards of that year and that grade are selling for 120, 125. Do I buy it for 160? Help him out a little bit. He's got enough money. He makes money. So I'd like to have that card. It's in great shape, but I don't know. I might pull the trigger. I don't know. It'll just sit in my collection. I won't sell it. It'll sit in there until. I pass away, which, you know, I'm sick anyway, so I don't know how much time I got left, how many more years, and it'll be for my girlfriend. She'll get to be able to cash stuff in and uh, have a little nest egg on the side, you know. So anyways, guys, I got a show to go to tomorrow around the corner. I'm going to see if I can pick up... Uh, any uh, replacement cards in better shape, uh, if they're not too expensive, and I'll finish building this set. All right? So keep collecting. Do what you're doing. Do what you love. And I'll see you on the flip side.